Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the King of the North qualifier numero dos. My name is Samuel Eric Lucifer to bottom, but today you can just <laughs> call me Sam. And my co cast today will be Trid. Welcome, Trid. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. I just got off the back of casting some games with Dalsy himself. And I'm eating some cookie crisp right now while we're waiting to go to pick up bands. So I'm living the life at the moment. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you eat your cereal. I'm gonna give it a little uh, um, bit of info about what just happened and where we are at the t in this tournament. Last week we did have extra win, as you all know, and they came home very well with a Zerot portal strategy. But unfortunately, that's banned now, so no team can use that today. However, today in the qualifier two for the King of the North, we have had some massive upsets. Grey Warwick being taken out by Manchester Bunnies, who will be playing in this upcoming game versus Huddersfield White. And then on the other side of the bracket in the second semi-final, we're going to have Team Study Master, who are a Manchester team, versus the University of Birmingham TCA Storm. That's also going to be a big game, and that's going to be over, uh, not streamed, I don't think, but will be a massive game either way. And that will mean that in the final, we'll have uh, either Manchester Buddies or Huddersfield versus Team Study Master or University of Birmingham. The King of the North is coming to you on the 2nd of March. We are based at the University of Manchester in Academy One, and it's going to be a huge day. Just a quick thank you to our sponsors. That is Twitch TV, Gamers Apparel, MSI, Newell, and Computer Planet. We could not do it without those guys. That is King of the North Tournament on the 2nd of March. Cannot wait. It's going to be big. We're going to have all sorts. League, Dota, CSGO, and plenty more else as we should be moving into Champion Select any time now. Yeah, well, hopefully we're going to be ready to go. Just sorting out some admin issues as well, but that's nothing to worry about. So, shall we let them... Get the pick and bands soon. So, for those of you who aren't aware, we're going to be seeing Manchester Bunnies go up against Huddersfield White in our first semi final of the day. And it's going to be a tough one. Like I mentioned as I passed off the last game, two Manchester teams remain in this tournament. None of them have qualified for it yet. So, they're really trying to make sure they have a home field competitor for this uh, event of King of the North on the 2nd of March. Trundle being banned straight away, followed up by a Lulu ban. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Trundle, we've seen already today. It was Huddersfield doing a great job in the top lane with that Trundle. Uh, pretty much a great counter to Fiora, really. They go sort of even. Uh, but with no Trundle there, you've got to ask yourself, that Fiora will probably be picked up. Who's going to who's gonna go top lane? There's the likes of Nautilus, sure. But uh, that's, again, it's a, t it's a target ban to the top lane. Um, and again, the Lulu... Two flex, uh, same with the Alistair, really safe picks, just getting banned out to start with. Nothing quite? Yeah, nothing really. Uh, well, other than the meta ban of Lulu, I think the Trundle and Alistair bans have got to be either preferential for mm. uh, Manchester Buddies, they don't want to play against it, or they think that Huddersfield White are going to use it. We know Armour loves a bit of Alistair. Um, so it's not surprising that they might be targeting him with that, at least being taken away from Tencheb as well. Yeah, we see Elise again, along with the likes of the Rek'Sai, Queen of the Jungle, and the Nidalee, who's been played an awful lot both in the LCS and the Newell. Um, just again, a really flexible jungler, perfect for those sort of pick compositions. With most teams just generally don't really want to see her. Tenchev has been the driving force for the Manchester Bunnies in the previous games that we've seen him, particularly when we were watching them last week. Uh, likes to play the Elise, also likes the Nidalee, generally likes to play junglers we can put a lot of pressure on early. So yeah, that's the target ban for him there. As we do see the Gragas come out. Uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, Gragas, we've not seen, uh, or at least I've not seen today whilst I'm casting. Uh, but is a very good jungler and does have that massive amount of disruption, which we like. Yeah, Gragas has recently uh, had some tuning done to his kit, and so he's come seen a little bit of resurgency with the way the game is going. Uh, Janna being banned for Noisegra. Uh, Noisegra, sorry, that game, the name always catches me. It's a me difficult out, one. I, I've still not done it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Noisiger. I'm going to go with Noisiger. Um, yeah, Janna being taken away. Clearly going to be a target ban towards her. Janna hasn't seen much play either, so it's nice to see that be removed from the playing field. And it's really eyes are turning onto what Manchester Bunnies 
really put their priority on and go for the first pick with this one. It's very much, it's yeah. all or nothing for Manchester Buddies at this point, because like I said, they're competing to represent at least one Manchester team at this event where it's being hosted. And so if Manchester Bunnies falter in this, all the pressure then goes on to the other side of the bracket where another Manchester team is going to be facing UOB TCA Storm. But Hyde is going to go straight away and lock in that Poppy flex pick. Yeah, Poppy, again, like exactly like you said, flex pick can go sort of numerous places. It might be in the top lane, jungle. Um, if it were a solo queue, you might see her in support or something silly like that. But I suspect that will be in the jungle for Tenchev. Uh, or top lane. Uh, pointing out on that King of the North history lesson, um, on the first King of the North, the two teams that made it to the final, this was two years ago, um, King of the North won, were both Manchester teams, and we felt pretty proud of ourselves. And then we had King of the North two a year ago, and no Manchester teams made it. We had one Manchester team in the semi final of one of the qualifiers. However, it ended up being a final between University of Birmingham and Nottingham University. So we are pretty anxious to get a Manchester team, at least one Manchester team in the final as Exeter have already taken one spot. So it would be nice to at least uh, get one of the Manchester teams through to the final of this qualifier, if not the live event, uh, to represent on home soil. Uh, but as we do see, the Morgana coming out. Uh, again, safe pick, brings a lot of CC to the game. And as I suspected, the Fiora going up in the top lane for Insect 2G Dragon, DBZ. Yeah, the old Trick 2G fanboy. <laughs> Person I've had the pleasure of casting many a time. Um, not really much to say about him other than he's always lackluster and disappointing. I'm only saying that. Oh, I know, that's I'm only saying that because I know he's listening. But I love you, really, Bay. <laughs> um, he's going to be playing that Fiora. He's seen it some moderate success on it in the past couple of weeks, so it's really nice to see him go back to it. Fiora is known to be the queen of top lane, uh, a throne a title well deserved. I do not like that for the... <laughs> I do not like that for Huddersfield White, though. Benjamin getting the Zed through the draft. Um, Zed, incredibly powerful at the moment. Always being banned out, and you've just given it to someone who looks like he'd do a ton of damage with it. And Tenchev still finds a similar style of jungler, picks up the Echo for the Manchester Bunnies. So it does look like Hyde will stick on that poppy, and it's going to be Tenchev playing the Echo in the jungle, which is an interesting one. Echo does okay in the jungle, pretty uh, good ganker, um, generally just good for the team, but it doesn't bring the same um, impact that he, Tenchev is used to playing. He's used to playing, as I was saying, these Nidalees, these Elises. So maybe slightly off pick for him. I'd like to see how he's going, uh, going to do. Again, Hyde as well. Hyde, we very used to seeing him on Renekton, but he's going to be picking up the poppy, th poppy this time. So slightly off picks. However, like you picked up on Trid, there is a Zed in the mid lane, and Zed at the moment banned all the time. Way too strong, way too mobile, great assassin. Uh, what do they have to deal with this? Well, there you go. They picked <laughs> up a Kindred. <laughs> picked up the Kindred. Probably going to be going over to Ihaz Cats in that jungle for some early game pressure, and really that's what they're going to need to shut this Zed down there's no real answer because i has cats has got the morgana locked in for his team at the moment could see that mid uh probably not the best idea on someone that mobile um but it's more likely to go over to armor so really they've got the luxury of a counter pick here on the side of huddersfield white absolutely and we're also going to be locking in that lucian for chris who's doing very well Actually, I has cats played Kindred in an earlier game today and did exceptionally well, um, picking up first blood, going about four one. He built the Devourer Root. Uh, I'll say that again, the Devourer Root, um, and got fully stacked in about eighteen minutes or something extremely silly, uh, picking up the Dragon and the Rift Herald for those five stacks. So generally, um, I'd be very worried if I was Manchester about shutting down that Kindred. Um, generally, I like the composition of Huddersfield so far. As we do pick up a vein and a Soraka. God, I can I can hear <laughs> Huddersfield White just tilting away into like off the face of the planet at the moment. Soraka, one of the most anti-fun champions yeah. known to man, and you're just giving it over to Manchester Bunnies. Uh, just keep keep watch this game because you're going to see the tilt in action. Um, <laughs> and Huddersfield White's solution to Benjamin on this Zed is to give Sharpie Lux. Um, I don't know about that one. 
<laughs> yeah. I, well, I don't speaking... know if Lux is the best option to go against Zed. Lux is somewhat meta at the moment. I mean, she's she's picked, but you're right. I mean, you've got to ask. Benjamin, he's the assassin. Great, taking out Squishies. What is Sharpie X going to have to counter that? I mean, he's got a shield. But it's generally not enough. And I know I tend to agree with Trid. It's, it's going to be an interesting lane. I think Sharpie X is going to want to try and just out roam and just happy to be farming in the mid lane. But we'll have to see how that goes. Um, Echo, not as good a ganker. Uh, as um, other jungle champions that could have been picked. So Sharpie X, you know, might be okay. Lux can play safe, especially if you're a good Lux player. Uh, but you're right, my face dropped when I saw that Soraka, just because I know that when we're casting, it's going to be, oh, bot lane's having a great time now. You know, farming, as usual. Oh, yeah, bot... Oh, looks like they're about to pick up another... Nope, Soraka altered. <laughs> exactly. Pretty, so yeah. this one could well be going a long way. Was that, I'm just going to practice on my ambulance and siren impressions when uh, Soraka comes speeding into a lane with that movement speed boost towards low health targets and just... Uh... Yeah, well, that, God. that is the advantage, you know. Casting a Soraka lane, you do have these big turnarounds there. So it's a potential for that. But generally, I think the bot lane, we're looking at it now, will be focusing a lot of attention, I would guess. Um, top lane, the Poppy Fiora matchup is Swings. I think it's really going to be divided on the jungle pressure. Uh, as we've seen, I have Cats and Tenchev are both the two, I see, two very hard carries for their team. Like, I has Cats. We saw him earlier in the day, as I explained. Really, really big. Coming up massive for his team earlier. And Tenchev last week did a brilliant job. So my eyes are going to be on the junglers this game. Yeah, it's going to have to be... I mean, I think I has Cats on Kindred could probably have the early against Tenchev. Um, I feel that Kindred is going to be a stronger early off against Echo. And it's really down to how Tenchev is going to be building this Echo as well, because a lot of people have gone for this new, go for the AP route using the new Rook Echoes like them. Some people have reverted back to the old jungle Echo route, which is where they pick up Cinderhawk and be a CC tank monster. Um, I'm curious as to how to see Tenchev is going to go down here, because I feel if he goes the AP route, Kindred might just out damage him in the early game and he won't have the survivability to deal with it. Yeah, you no, know, I think you're right. That's actually why I was sort of holding off uh, go, talking about Echo just because I'm really, I have no idea like what Tenchev is going to decide to build. Uh, again, they do need a bit of a front line in this team. At the moment, it's just really Poppy uh, who is going to be building some damage as well. Um, so getting a bit of tankiness on the Echo is probably going to be necessary. But uh, on at the same port time, they do have a Soraka. So building health sort of, uh, you know, they don't need as big a front line as a usual team would have. But then looking over to Huddersfield's side on the right of the screen, you know, they don't have a huge tank either. Uh, it's again a very kitey team. Every single one of the champions bar Fiora is ranged. Um, so both teams actually not looking to hard engage, I would say, more so on the side of Manchester Bunnies. Yeah, and one of the things I've just got to talk about as well is, and I've just realized it, Sharpie and Armour both have bindings. <laughs> so mm. uh, they have two ways that can work. One, they have a fail safe if they miss the first one. Two, they have chain bindings <laughs> with ridiculous lengths yeah. of CC for these targets to just blow all their damage onto them. Yeah, it's in generally, it looks like a, you know, beyond that though, it looks like a fairly low CC game. You know, uh, Fiora not bringing out a huge amount of CC or even none pretty much, unless she gets that repost off. Uh, then Kindred, some slows. But on the other side, I would tell you, but I actually can't see the teams at the moment. Fiora, the Fiora has scheme. slows. Um, her second auto attack is a slow. First one's guaranteed. Yeah. No, first one's guaranteed. To, first one's a slow. Second one's guaranteed to crit, I think. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they all have very soft CC. Yeah. <laughs> Not really much coming out here. Um, but... Looking at the teams now, you said the biggest problem is going to be kind of the tankiness that's going to come into it. Um, I feel that in the right situations, in Huddersfield White can get ahead, their CC would be able to enable them to not have the difficulties of being blown up. No, I completely agree because just um, along with the tankiness, the sort of um, the fact that a lot of these teams, they, they're not bringing a huge amount of CC to the table, the actual CC that Huddersfield White has, i.e. these long-range pick CCs, the Lux binding and the uh, binding from Morgana, uh, is going to allow them just to start the fights really well. And then it's just uh, 
it's a four and five. Uh, and, and this, I think, might be how it goes. So I do worry a bit for my Manchester Bunnies. Um, but I, I am rooting for them s very silently and uh, off the radar. We do have a pause coming out. I suspect that's a new tradition, isn't it? Oh, it yeah, it is. Pauses are... There we go. I has cats as well in the chat. I don't know if you can see it with our host letting you see it, but um, I has cats is calling for uh, Soraka to be removed from the game. <laughs> uh, as you do. <laughs> um, really a lot of complaints here. Attempts at speaking foreign languages. <laughs> it's just... Um, <laughs> Not, not very good. I'm going to hide that away. Um, so, just to uh, frame what's going on here. So, this is going to be the one of the semi-finals we have on at the moment. Uh, on the other side of the bracket is UOB TCA Storm going up against Team Student Masters, who are another Manchester team. The winners of both of these matches will face each other in the final for a chance for the qualification of this week. The winner of the final today will be going up against University of Exeter A at the King of the North final on the 2nd of March. So, they, these teams are two games away from the final. And they just got to beat out their opponents today. Seems simple enough. Seems simple enough. Yeah, you would hope so. But we know, um, having cast these tournaments before, you do see players um, st start to make critical errors in games of pressure. And each game there is more and more pressure and they get a bit more tired because let's be fair they played a lot of games today um, and actually Huddersfield White may be looking for something uh, but maybe just playing it safe Manchester happy to set up those standard across the board wards nothing too deep um, on this game trying to play it safe unsurprisingly I think that it's uh, it, these level ones would have no one's a clear winner I think it's too volatile mm. if they were to meet a level one who's going to win the obvious money for me was that if Lux and the Morgana both scale their binding first, I mean, they would win the level one because of the chain CC and the amount of targets they could CC whilst the damage comes out. But I don't think that they would both want to scale. I think Lux might take the E first just to help with the wave clear early. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they just don't really want to risk something. Um, though we do have noticed that Kindred is going to be starting top, um, whereas the Echo is going to be starting bottom. So we could see some crossover. Uh, potentially ganks top or top mid or bottom uh, about the three minute four minute mark and really the jungle as we explained the jungle matchup is probably going to be one of the more interesting to me um, along with the mid lane uh, Lux as you said Trent, was an interesting pick to pick into the Z but maybe Sharpie X knows something that we don't so we'll have to That's see very, there's a potential there. I think that Sharpie X, if he's just on point with his bindings, I don't think he'll have too much difficulty. The only issue with Lux is that there's no real, other than her barrier, there's no real resistance spells or mobile spells to try and get away from Zed. But Hyde, mobility is not a problem for him. Look at how much he's doing to Insect 2G at the moment. Grasby and Dying doing work to keep him alive, but they're both going incredibly low. If you look at the corrupting potions, it's Hyde that comes ahead in that trade with one more stack left in Insect. Yeah, it's it's hard it's hard to call this one really because Fiora has been so prominent in these games today, so prominent in the RCS and the Newell, um, and generally tends to do very well. And it comes down to when she's going to use that repost. Uh, Hyde could well get something off here as gang. Yeah, well, I has cats. He's got the red buff in. He managed to get three stacks of the slow one, but he can't commit to a dive just yet. He's only level three, but it just alleviates a little bit of pressure for Insect in that top lane. But this is how it started. Last time we saw Hyad Cats on Kindred, he would just do little ganks. Sometimes they were obviously not going to complete for the kill. The idea is just to alleviate pressure, increase pressure for his team, and constantly pushing, constantly creating pressure. And this is pressure, really, that Tenchev on the Echo um, cannot match early. Uh, so well played by Ice Cats there, putting the Fiora in a slightly better position. Yeah, like, like the finalists in this match and your use of the word, there are too much pressure. Yeah, going on. Right Thank you very now. much. <laughs> you said, said like pressure like five times in a row. I was like, okay. There's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you're right. There me. is a lot of pressure. <laughs> was that like a meta uh, reinforcement of that? <laughs> I feel like that might be my own pressure. I'll stop saying pressure now. I'll just there say you KPI. Keep saying it though. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> back into the matchups here. Hyde, he's lost a little bit of CS off of that gank, so he's fallen behind 
insect at the moment, but I'm sure he'll have no problem catching back. Lucian and Lux both having CS leads off their opposite numbers. And because Kindred spent a little bit of time ganking, Echo amassed a small creep lead, but it's only three, which isn't that big. It's not really big at all at the moment. So really, I'd say that uh, in Huddersfield White, have got the early gold advantage just mainly for their CS. Yeah, pretty much. And it was sort of going to go that way. Nice binding comes on battery. But that's not going to stop the lane. Noiziger, or however we're going to call uh, that name, is going to heal up whenever he can. This is the reality. Usually in this Lucian lane, you'd see a lot of harassment, a lot of bullying, uh, especially with Morgana landing those bindings. But Unreal Basley, happy to get super aggressive now. Yeah, and somehow Noiziger finds a binding onto herself. She has to use the silence just to deter any attack. Echo is not at the party. I saw the Kindred's photo and thought it was Echo in the lane. Uh, but Unreal Basley is going to be the recipient of a gank. Heal comes Whoa. out, but first blood goes over to I has cast. They're looking for more. The flash binding from armor makes sure that another kill is found. One goes to I has cast and one goes to Chris. Huddersfield White, 2-0. Well, I'm really not sure what Unreal Basley was thinking there. Seemed to sort of even sway towards them for a second. But brilliant timing, yeah, great uh, harassment. And it all came pretty much from that dark binding, landed by armor on that Morgana. Um, if you're playing a Soraka lane, you, Soraka needs to stay back. You let the great, uh, your AD carry get aggressive. Unreal Basri in that situation did get aggressive, but then Noiziger found herself being caught out by binding too far forward, and then she can't heal herself without landing the Q, and it's not a big heal anyway. She finds herself dead, and Kindred comes in at exactly the right time. I happy to farm a bit under tower here. Insect to Dragon finding himself slightly behind on the CS. Hyde doing a brilliant job. We do know him as a very aggressive top laner, but that could be his downfall. Yeah, absolutely. He's gonna be, uh, you know, he's gonna carry on. He's got a small CS lead. He's been winning out these early trades against Insect. I wouldn't be surprised if he took that. It went to his head a little bit, you know, and he started making maybe a little bit of overzealous plays that could cost him in the end. I mean, the Kindred, 1-0-1, one, one, gonna have slightly more impact, I believe, than Tenchev, especially at this stage in the game. Hyde, using a minion to get close to him, try and get that a nice pass of his prot. He's not got level six when Insect has. Grand Challenge has been laid down. The mobility is there, he's trying to prop all the vitals to get the heal. He, even he, would not want to tower die the poppy at this point. But he's now lost yeah. that stage, and Insect has got a slight lead over him. Just as you were saying, Trid, there was just a bit of overconfidence there. He didn't quite realize that Insect was going to hit the level 6 first, and he did pay the price for it, but he does have those corruption potions. I think he's out of them now. Um, as we do see pings coming down, could see action here in the jungle. Yeah, IS Cats needs to be careful, though, because Benjamin could turn this around with him very easily. There we go. He throws out the shadow just to deter it. The threat of the death mark onto a level 4 Kindred is too, too big for IS Cats to ignore. Absolutely, and... It will be interesting to see how these mid laners tend to play it. They both have the ability to push out the mid lane, which means they can open their lane uh, up and go for these big roams. As Insect just harassing Hyde down even further. Um, doesn't have the same items, does have item advantage over Hyde at the moment, or that long sword. Um, it, also, I'd just like to pick up I has Cat is going to be going this Devourer route again as Unreal Basic gets caught. Yeah, Unreal Basic gets chunked for huge amounts of damage, and it's coming out quicker than Soraka's heal is. So, Basri, I mean, they have the potential, and Chris and Armor have just shown that they can combo him down before he goes. But talking of combos, Benjamin gets the Wombo to the face, but without the items to back it up, it's not an instant deletion. I think this is uh, getting an idea how Sharpie X wanna plays this Lux. He wants to, I mean, early it should be okay, you know, before the death mark. But now that Zed is level seven, he's really gonna have to try and get some poke off from range and gonna have to blow that ult whenever he can, just to keep Benjamin scared. Side CN going in. Yeah, he's using the double knock up there. He's not gonna dive. They both of them will not dive their opposite number just purely because of their innate strength that they're both the champions have. So they're going to back off and force them on. They're just showing signs of aggression just to give them more freedom in the lane. Rather than actually retrieve the kill at this point. Because both of them aren't willing to like throw everything on the line for it. Yeah, and I think actually that's the mark of a quite experienced type of player. There he goes. Yeah, he decided to go in though. There we That's what we're talking about. He's using the grand challenge to give him the mobility. Ooh. Just shy of getting the kill though. I mean, if Poppy was to 
charge flash Q. She could have got the kill then, but I don't, I don't think she was expecting the damage. Tenchev throwing back the tiebreaker. Basby is there. Black Shield goes out to stop the stun. The AoE drops down, but Chris is finding himself using the binding onto Soroka. She can't heal herself. Chris fires out the tap, but Tenchev uses the Chrono Breaker to get back into the fight. You cause the damage on Ihaz Cats to force him out. If I has cats and hit six sooner, uh, that would have been a different fight entirely. Yeah, there's n there is no doubt that Lanza Red Spike would have made a huge difference to that fight. But it was, I think it's very well played of Manchester to recognize that and go on it straight away. But you see the power of Noiziger on that Hiraka there. Someone really should have died in that fight, and but it was just back and forth because he's happy to stand back, heal up. You see Elmer Basri go in, back off. The same for um, Tenchev on that Echo. So yeah, nice little exchange. No one dies for it. Scores still sit 0-2 to the side of Huddersfield as uh, Inside and Hyde slap each other a few times in the face. Yeah, Hyde has got Insect number with that shield that blocks dashes like straight away. But look at that. Dashes over the coin to the night. The shield for Hyde. So they're reading each other very well in this matchup and just trying to get those little victories wherever they can. Noisega finds another Noisega. binding again. Silence and slow comes out. There's no range to finish her off though. So he has to back off. Ayaz Katz making his way into the top lane again. This could be round two of the first game of the game. Hyde seems to commit to the fight. He might have done it a little bit too soon because here comes Ayaz Katz. Riposte the damage, but he's still getting blown away right now. Has to flash for it, but Hyde picks up the kill. Ayaz Katz is trying to pop as much as he can and gets himself another kill. But Hyde just showing that he's not out of this fight just yet. No, well played by Hyde to sneak a kill there. Did very well. Nice little flash cue. Unreal Basley has been caught. Oh. be okay though. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just looking at the situation. It was obvious that Soraka was going to be able to heal him back up. Mm. So I was just like, it's not even worth my effort at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is the thing, you know, Soraka baits you in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, look, you can bait enemies, it can bait casters. Like, I'm just like, I'm not going to fall for her ruses anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just look at how far back Noisker is able to sit. Unreal Basley can play super aggressive, even on Vayne with her short range, and doesn't really have to worry about it. Not enough damage from Armour and Chris to kill her that fast, unless someone else is there. Did see Zed try and roam down a minute ago, but unfortunately, Noise got got taken too low for him to really afford going into that. But that is what I expect from these mid laners. I expect to push out the lanes and both roam because Lux with her ult and Zed with his general mobility does a very, very good job. There we go. Silence onto Armory. Might be a little bit out of position. Culling's coming out onto Basby. Heal has had to be used as well as a ultimate heal from Soraka. No, it wasn't even the ultimate. It was the flat. Summon a spell heal and a W, but here comes Tenchev in the top lane. Insect, he repost the stun beautifully, but the slow is down. The movement speed is there. Hyde gets on top of him. Tenchev ultimately picks up the kill, though. Yeah, very nice. We do want Tenchev to start picking up the kills. Does look like we had this discussion, but he's going to go for the Runic Echoes build, so going to be going more damage, more AP, as we do see... I asked Katz going for that Skirmisher's Sabre Devourer. Very, very nice. We saw them do this earlier. Um, generally, there's you see Warrior a lot of the time on Kindred, but the Devourer, as we've seen on Hayas Katz, can be used very, very well, and he does a very, very good job of stacking up extremely fast. As Manchester take the Rift Herald, which is nice to see, because we don't often see teams prioritizing that before the 20-minute mark. No, not at all. Oh, but they've got the hell of that Rift Herald. I, who did they give it over? Did they give it over to Hyde on Poppy? I believe, yes. So Hyde will be taking the Rift Herald buff. Going to give them that advantage. Seeing as how even the insect lane, uh, the insect to Hyde lane is at the moment, I think that's going to give him a massive advantage. Help him to push out. Um, and also, given the fact that Fiora is about to complete the, uh, the timeout, I forgot that uh, Titanic Hydra would be the item I was looking for. When she completes that, she's going to hit a big power spike, and the buff from the Rift Herald is going to be pretty useful. Yeah, it's going to help her hit this, uh, get this wave forward. Hyde's already got the early advantage in the lane, so to be given that Rift Herald buff is really going to help him out. Armor is going to roam up to the top as well to try and give some assistance, seeing as uh, Insect's having a little bit of a rough time in that lane. Um, in the meantime, Chris has found his way to mid lane. But it's just giving Unreal Basby a lot of time to catch up the CS deficit that he's accrued in this lane. Which isn't going to be the best course of action for Huddersfield White. 
I completely agree with you. It seems a little strange to uh, uh, leave a winning lane, a lane that you're sort of gaining a CS at difference on. Um, obviously, I think they've come to the realization now that they're going to struggle to get kills. Um, but it does seem like they've given up on that roam attempt and they are coming back at the lane with Kindred instead. Ice taking a tower hit. Could see something here. Yeah, Kendra's gone over the side. Unreal Basvi eats a cull into the face. Armor gets in range for the binding. The soul shackles are going to keep him in place. The Soraka heal comes out, but it will not save you. Armor get, picks up a kill for himself. And there is only so much healing that Soraka can do. Um, I thought it was a strange um, idea to target the vein, but when you've got that much damage, especially coming out, the Devourer Kindred, you can do it. Um, unfortunately, the dragon has already been done by them, so nothing to get. And then we do see a fight. Yeah, Black Shield goes onto armor, stops the heal from coming out. Chris going to throw down the double tap, uses the ultimate to get in range. Hopefully that AP damage can help out. I has cats is in range, drops the slow. Final Ooh. spark comes out, but he's already out of the way. Mid laners roaming down, perfect timing. Not able to hit that Luxor. Could have made the difference there. Um, and this is the sort of mid game that I was hoping to see, Trid. Um, I really want just Lux and Zed to get in involved. I don't think they'll go for each other, um, but it's really going to be which one of them can make the biggest impact on the bot lane uh, when these junglers come in as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a case of the all in and the mid lane is going to be very difficult for both of these teammates mm. because of the mobility of Zed and just because of the CC that comes out of Lux. It's quite difficult to get a successful complete combo onto the opposite man. But here we go, Tenchev managed to find IS Cats with a stun. The AP damage is doing work, forces the Lamb's respite out. He's gonna work away where he can, buy himself some time for the rest of his team to show up. But Benjamin Ooh. is there, is ticking away. Oh, the, Ign sorry, the red buff gets the kill onto Tenchev. There you have the power of Kindred, and I got to credit the bot lane for just reacting so fast, as well as the Lux, you know, um, just there, and does manage to bait uh, Tenchev in, despite putting so much damage down early. Um, and this is also the, the use of the red buff, use of the Devourer. Um, Ice Cat knows exactly what he's doing, and baited Tenchev in a bit there. Unfortunate for him. Uh, as he does now sit 1 1 0 and just look at IS Cat. Three kills, two assists, and zero deaths. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Hyde getting a little bit more aggressive as the Taz back for Grand Challenge comes out from Insect, but he's used the ultimate to lock him up. Grasping and dying, striking him up. He has to proc this final proc, or he will not get lived. Oh, the Flash comes out with the auto attack, so Rocker Heal guarantees that his safety. Hyde picks himself up another kill in the top lane. How's that for Team Synergy? Perfect. Zed could go in on it, decides not to. Uh, and let's see, do you see the hide swinging? Oh. Oh, just needed the auto attack possibly to finish that one off. But Sharpie's damage, you can see the results of what's happening right now. Just gradually getting more and more powerful with the thing. He's going to try and disrupt that recall. Throws out the binding to do so. But the mission accomplished. It's just delayed Zed even more. Yeah, so right now, yeah, we've got a bit of a lull. It might, might be time to actually just take a stock of how things are going but you do see Hyde looking like he's winning out on that Fiora finishes Iceborne Gauntlets now is two kills up Fiora's actually died three times though it does look like Ayakat could be doing a little invade here trying yeah, to steal away the blue buff yeah, he's just gonna go away it's not particularly safe he doesn't have vision of the area so there's no real reason to commit to something but now that armor's in the vicinity they might be looking to get in there and try and take this buff away they're calling Maybe. reinforcements on both sides as well. Benjamin converges as well. Just the simple presence has alerted so many members of the each team to drag their attention down there. What is extremely impressive and the usefulness of the armor roam is that look at the vision on the side of Huddersfield right now. They've just got fantastic vision in the blue side jungle of Manchester. They've got the pinks down as well and, and they're all coercing and they've got the mid tower doesn't look like there's any issue there. Insect going yeah, in. Yeah, but Insect, he's hard to pop the grand challenge here to try and get the movement speed to get away. He can't, he pops the challenge but retreats because he just can't compete at the moment. Kruz seems to be the focus of tension. I has cats has come to try and throw this. A beautiful shield there to stop them. He's to get himself to safety. Hyde knows this champion well and is using it to its limits. Yeah, and meanwhile we see in the mid lane the culling does go down. It doesn't mean to pick anything up. Though, that pressure on Hyde, despite Hyde impressive ability may still lose them the tower which would put the tower score at two to Huddersfield for Manchester's none though the teleport does come out good use 
He's in. Oh, Hyde's going aggressive onto him. He's not like be looking for a 2v1. Because Benjamin's here to make it a 2v2. 3v2. But Unreal Basby in the bot lane. Soul Shackles are down. Pink Wars are there to stop it. No one's in range to heal other than the ultimate. But Soroka's on the top half of the map. Nowhere near her AD carry. Now is the cue for a death to come out. Meanwhile, the skirmish continues in the top lane as Huddersfield White looked to put pressure on the top outer tower. Chris. Throwing out some combo with the double tap. Only manages to land a couple, but they're trying to answer with a turret of their own. Welcome oh, to the mid game, the ladies and gentlemen. We are. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying, look at the damage coming out on Tenchev. It's just ridiculous that Thunderlord's prop that Armour's got has been so effective. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, he's putting up a 20 CS difference at the moment. It does look like he's going to be pushing onto tower, and he's just been so aggressive and so dominant um, in that mid lane, despite the pressure coming out of I has cats. And Huddersfield are going to take another tower now, uh, putting their towers up 2-1. to one, Looking like they could be going for a dragon as well, which is only going to help IS Cat's Kindred Devourer stacks. F another 5 for her. Riffeld also going down. Crikey, they are doing everything, this Huddersfield team. There we go. It's mainly to clear the way. There's no way he's going to kill Hyde. Armor coming around from the side, though. Throws out the Dark Binding. Doesn't land, unfortunately. Yeah, these two sort of bindings that you were, you were hoping to sort of connect um, not really coming together yet but we'll see to the late game um, when they do get two bindings on the same person they are pretty much going to die that's just the reality of it uh, and it only takes one of them to hit for that Lux ultimate then to land uh, taking a stock of the items actually what I've been really impressed with is Sharp X on that Lux whilst he hasn't achieved any kills he's not really participated in anything to be honest <laughs> He is ahead of CS, and he's been pretty happy to do so, which is surprising given uh, what we thought about this Zed Lux com uh, matchup coming in. We really thought uh, Zed was going to wrecked to some extent, but he doesn't seem to be doing so. Yeah, it's a really nice play, but I'm very surprised that IS Cats opted to go for the Devourer build rather than the rather than the warrior enchantment. Yeah. There's a lot of Luxus, a lot of kid resolves to go for the early game damage that comes with that. Benjamin tanking tower shots as the wave is cleared by Lux's final spark. Yeah, I mean, it's, if it's anything to go by by the game before, what he'll build is still he'll build the hurricane, um, and then what he'll do is, in fight, when the lamb's respite is on, he will just jump around, hitting every wall. And by the time that lamb's respite ends, he might die, but he's just oh, done Benjamin so much Oh, Benjamin's down the CC. Him. Tenchev goes under the turret to deter and take some of the culling, but nothing happens because, you know, Sorok is there. So, Huddersfield are ahead. I think that's pretty significant. They're about two gold lead ahead, but what are they going to do about this hide? Ice Cats going in. <coughs> yeah, big mistake going in there. The shield is used to deter him. Has to flash over the wall. Insect is there to assist with the turnaround. Leads into the Lamb's Red Slavite. You have been baited and outsmarted. Insect 2G using the movement speed buff, trying nice. to get all Fox of the Garden Challenge to get that kill. He does it finally. He picks himself up a kill, but Benjamin gets on to Ayaz Cats without Lamb's Respite. He could be going down and Knight's ticking away. He's going to live through that. But here comes Armour. He wants to land that binding. No, he's going to go for the Soul Shackles first. Benjamin breaks them with the Shadow Dash. Throwing out the shuriken behind him. Light binding oh. lands. Final spark. Sharpie picks himself up. The first kill of the game. Yeah, and that is not ideal for Manchester now. The Lux is in the game. Sitting on the one kill. And unfortunate that Benjamin on the Z did not manage to lock down that Kindred. Didn't quite do the damage. I think Kindred did actually pick up a Lux shield um, at the time. I believe that's how he managed to survive. Noise go getting caught. Good die here. Yeah, he's going to have to run around here. Black Shield's down on armor. No CC has landed. Pops the Talisman of Ascension. Has to flash the Dark Binding. The Noisy Girl gets out alive. Yeah, flurry of events in the last few minutes. Does put Manchester behind. 3-8 the score now. But turrets are even. And CS, as we've recently explained, is is uh, across the board just meandering. You know, we see Hyde ahead of that for Yora, but then on the same time, uh, Lucian, the lane bully is, going 30 CS ahead of the Unreal Battery on the vein. Um, so generally the CS is all over the place and it leads us to a gold lead. It isn't actually massively significant, only about 3,000 23 minutes in. Yeah, 3,000 3, gold 22 minutes in. Not a substantial gold lead, but I mean they're hitting some real iron power spikes. I mean Kindra just got her sated version of the Devourer finally enabled. Yeah, I mean that's 
going to make a big difference. You touched on the fact that lots of Kindreds choose to go Warrior. Um, and yes, early game, a lot better. But that's not how IHS Cats likes to play. He likes to play super aggressive early game. But then that means that it leads into an even more devastating late game. And that really starts to take effect from the 25 minute, 30 minute mark. Um, it's going to be great also for taking objectives uh, such as the Dragon or the Baron. Uh, those are pretty much the objectives as well as towers. And they are looking for a tower now. Yeah, they need to be careful. They don't want to get on the other side of Hoppy to be rammed into a wall for a teammate to follow up on Tenshev. Going pretty fast with that movement speed boost from the Runic Echo. Looking to find a fight potentially here with his comrade Benjamin. But Alistair White, they've caught Hyde a little bit out of position here. There's nothing to E to. There you go, Fiora putting on some damage, but here comes Tenchev and Benjamin well, from the here. side. Grand Challenge is thrown down onto Benjamin. Meanwhile, Ooh. he's trying to ult someone. The Grams Respite will keep them alive. There's a little bit of chaos going on here. Sharpie managed to throw out the ultimate. Tenchev uses his own to defer it. The fadeaway kill with the Echo Q picks up a kill onto Insect 2G. That was just a mad fight. I just got to throw out the high, the beautiful ult to knock Morgana, the one champion with the big amount of CC out the fight for that well. But I also saw Tenchev on the Echo use his ult just to get out of that Lux laser. Perfectly timed. They do take that tower. Oh, Dark Binding finds Hyde, the silenced area comes around, it also results in a binding for Chris. Armour using the Soul Shackles to lock down Hyde where he can, Tenchev's coming around from the side as well. The shackles were broken and Hyde walks away scot-free. All the while you've got to ask yourself, Unreal Basri is not in any of that exchange. There was The whole exchange was a 4v5 somewhat, uh, but hasn't really managed to do much with that CS lead, still 30 behind. Um, and leaves Manchester in a slightly awkward position, still behind in gold, but have evened it up somewhat with that exchange. Dragon will be coming up any moment now, and it'll be interesting to see if Huddersfield are going to contest. Uh, I don't think Huddersfield are very much in the mindset they're going to contest everything in this point, because it's still so close, and there's still so many ways that their people can do the work. I has Cap no having to E away, the Silver Bolts will make sure that he stays that way. There we go, final spark onto Noisy Girl. That's the cue for everyone to go in. Unreal Basmi, the Soraka Hills are coming up, but it's not enough. The Unreal Challenge didn't manage to get a prop of the one of the hits, so there was no heal platform for the rest of the team. Hyde flashes into the wall, knocks up three members of the team with a hammer, but there's no one to follow it up, so Hyde will drop as well. Two kills for Huddersfield White. Hyde just not getting the support he needs in that situation, and it was an awkward dragon for Manchester, I think. They are in the mindset that they really needed to get some sort of objective, but now they've given away a dragon, they've given away another turret, the turret score now 3-3. Three three. Um, but Lucian is in mid lane, Chris pushing down that tower with absolutely no defense, as three men here, looks like they are going to push them off the tower and put a lot of pain down. Not much that Anchor can do about this. Not to get caught by binding, if they get caught by binding in that situation, they're dead. So Huddersfield, happy to keep pushing off the back of that dragon. Three dragons now, so we'll have the extra movement speed as well. Yeah, so they've got the percentage movement speed increase. They've taken down the towers. They've pushed, um, they pushed the Manchester buddies all the way back to their base in two out of three lanes. So they've really sh exerted their dominance in the last passage of play just to make sure that they've given themselves more freedom for objectives. Potentially a Baron Nasher coming out shortly if they can get a kill advantage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would not like to see Huddersfield go for the Baron without getting a kill advantage. That being said, they do have the tools to get there. I mean, they have 380 carries, they have a Lux. There's, the damage is certainly there. Um, so it's going to be one of those things where they need to get a Baron that's completely uncontested, really. Uh, just because both teams, in this case, are very, very squishy. We touched on uh, whether the, uh, the Echo would be going tank or AP, but it does look like it's going to be somewhat a combination of both. Oh, high good call here. Oh, they managed to perfectly sidestep the ultimate. Grand Challenge comes down. The CC is there, and Hyde has been taken out before this even happened. If I was Huddersfield White, I'd be looking at that Baron thinking, right, that's ours. Yeah, just to be explained, that's exactly what they need. The one kill up, and of all the people they could have got, that Hyde is perfect. Their main tank for the side of Manchester is not in the game for the next 33 seconds. But it does look like they're going to play it safe, Huddersfield. Unreal Basri is backing off. Doesn't seem to be worried that they're going for the Baron. They do have vision of it. Uh, perhaps just a bit early. 
Well, Huddersfield White did ping out that bot lane wave, so I have a feeling that's going to be addressed before they do anything to do with Baron Nasher. Yeah, absolutely. The reality is that, as I was saying, they're both way, way too squishy to try and do a Baron with much competition. Um, and they, both teams have a huge amount of damage that they can lay down. AoE, Lux Laser could completely decimate a team in the Baron pit. Um, and in the same way, Zed's, uh, Zed and the like of the Echo Ultimate could also do the same. Blue going to be going over. Could be stolen. Yeah, there's potential steal coming out here. Lux did secure that. Tenchev eats with the majority of a culling. He's not going to go back in the end with outside of the way. Benjamin pops the Yomus, goes on to Chris. There's no one there. Teleport is coming up to get Insect into the fight. Chris cleanses the death mark off beautifully. Ultimate comes out high, has himself challenged by the Grand the challenge, and he doesn't manage to pop the vitals, and he's not going to go down anytime soon. Lamb's respite is going to keep the team away. Tenchev uses the ultimate to break himself back into the system, but that is Insect going down to hide. The only members of the team to drop so far are Unreal, Basri, and Insect. I would say that... Uh, how does White still have very much so have the advantage in this situation? Yeah, it did seem like Manchester were trying to force that team fight pretty hard. Benjamin Zed going in pretty desperately on Chris, not really noticing that he actually has the Quicksilver Slash. That getting, like you said, cleansed perfectly. Um, and it did set up for a beautiful lock oh, through the jungle. This is the problem when you take fights in the jungle. Everyone gets quite squished up and it makes them incredibly vulnerable to AoE. Uh, AoE spells, such as the Lux Ultimate, probably the perfect example there. Um, but again, weirdly, only a one for one. So Manchester perhaps um, getting off a little light there. Good for them, as they are only 7k uh, behind now. So that could become a bit more of an issue. However... Something we haven't talked yeah. about quickly, and I meant it as a joke at the beginning of the game about an underwhelming top laner. Mm. But look at where all the deaths lie on Huddersfield White. Literally all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, I think, you know, Manchester have put a massive amount of focus there. I know they know that Hyde is a very, very good player of theirs. He's one of their carries. Tenchev and Hyde have been shown to have great synergy in the past. Um, and of course, the thing is, the risk of the Fiora, you really don't want to fed Fiora. Of all the, you look at those champions, you look at Lucian, you, Fiora is the one person you don't want to fed. You do not want to be against this split push threat. Um, but saying that, Everyone else on the team for Huddersfield is doing exceptionally well. Like you said, they haven't died a single time. Lux has now completed her Rabadon's death cap. Oh, Noiser goes. going to get caught out with the burst. He has to use the ultimate heal to save himself. Chris gives him two love taps to the booty, and he's going to pick himself up a kill. <laughs> well, bank, thank you, man. What can you do against that? Um, again, the option for Baron is there, but I do not think Huddersfield are going to take it. They're happy to push down this tower. Yeah, I don't see anything else happening here. They've got an advantage. They've taken out their main heal bot and they've just managed to take that tower as well. Benjamin eats the majority of the culling and finds himself chunked because of it and that's Huddersfield White pinging out the Baron. Yeah, Benjamin is low. Will have to go back. Doesn't have anything like a teleport and Noiziger is still out on the Seracus but no healing. It would be a 3v5 if they were to go in and Hyde is still bottom. It does not look like they've got to contest this. It's going to be a free Baron for Huddersfield. Yeah, there's no contention there. It's better off just to let them be because they, like they said, they had no defense for that. Baron Nash going over to Huddersfield White. Um, this could be them starting to take control of this map even more so than they have. That 10 cold, that 10k gold lead is going to amass to a lot more if they play this correctly. Huddersfield have the items. They're about to have the fourth dragon. But that's going to give you extra damage on the turret. Doesn't look like that's going to be contested either. And that puts them in a very nice position. And the nasty thing about this Huddersfield team is they're getting to the point now where they have the items that block Manchester. They've got the Zonyas on the Morgana, so that nullifies any Zed ultimate. Uh, the Zed ultimate is nullified by the Quicksilver self, most notably on Chris with the Quicksilver slash. Um, and that's just a massive issue. Um, and of course, Kindred, who was super squishy, is now not only massive damage step, but also is buying the Sterex Gauge, picking up that extra health for that extra survivability. It's just a massive problem now <coughs> with all these items that Huddersfield are picking up. Yeah, absolutely. Armour's got that Zonia's Hourglass as well. He can actually initiate for the team under the right circumstances. So this lack of a front line for Huddersfield White hasn't been punished as much as one would initially think. Yeah, and I think you picked someone up perfectly when you said that Realistically, um, 
those bindings coming out of armor and uh, Sharpie are, are the more, most dangerous thing at this stage because if one person gets picked up, it's a 4v5. There's just so much damage on both teams. And because neither uh, team really has much of a front line, it's all about who can catch each one first and those bindings are allowing Huddersfield to do that. Absolutely, and here we are. They've managed to push the wave up. You've got the split push from Insect happening in the top lane. TP is available for him as well. They're just going to try and lay the pressure on and like, buy him time to get this split push to happen. There you go, Dark Binding lands onto Hyde. Not much happening when you land on the tankiest member of the team and you've got the heal bot stood right behind you. Yeah, they're not going to do anything about that. It's interesting that Hyde is choosing to stay with his team at this point. I There, oh, there you go. He is starting to split push now. Um, despite Fiora now getting a few kills, he should still get a handle her and counter that split push because really, you just do not want the Fiora to get back. Oh, Basri, he's very close to dying. I has cats commits to the kill. Doesn't get it, but it's going to be enough to force him away from this turret. And that's going to be the mid lane and him and are going down. Benjamin has to use his Shadow Dash and the Yomus to get away. Manchester Bunnies are in absolute disarray at the moment. They cannot compete with Huddersfield White and this pressure. That's one in hip down. They're looking for the second. They've broken the base. There's going to be another second inhibitor. This could be very, very difficult to come back. Manchester really have oh, to look for something Tenchev here. Tenchev looking to proc the stun. Unreal Basri is trying to get the damage down. Deathmark goes onto Ihaz Cats, but he's in the Lamb's Respite. In the chaos, Insect picks up the heal from uh, from Hyde. Now he's going to chase down to Tenchev, picking himself up a double kill. Meanwhile, Basri managed to get a kill himself and took out Chris. Armor, Sharpie, Insect. They're going to have oh. to do the 3v2. Basri gets hit by the Wombo combo and he's going to go down. That only leaves a heal bot to clear these waves, which I don't think is going to happen. So it looks like Huddersfield White, they're going to take down the Nexus turrets. 17-7. to They're going to win this and proceed to the final and to hopefully qualify themselves for the King of the North on the 2nd of March. I'm sorry, Soraka, but you can't heal buildings. You're going to lose. Manchester <laughs> Bonnie's well played, but you didn't quite make it this time. Huddersfield White, congratulations, going through to the final of this qualifier. Wow. Massive game. Huddersfield really coming out of the gate there. I was really impressed with just, uh, particularly at the end, just their ability to close out, really. just uh, It could have gone on so much longer, but they're happy with all the uh, utility they have in the terms of the Lamb's Respite uh, and the Grand Challenge and the healings and those sort of things. So they're happy to dive towers despite being a really squishy team and at the end cleaned up very quickly. Uh, well played. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a short break, but we're going to be back shortly, I believe, with the final of the second qualifiers, where we're going to finally see who's going to be facing University of Exeter in the new, uh, sorry, in the King of the North final on the 2nd of March.